Okay, so why did I choose the Sigma 35 Art over the Pentax FA Limited 31? Let's run through the tech specs and then we'll have a talk about it. Okay, so as we become customary now, let's talk about the technical specs of this lens. The Sigma 35mm f1.4 DGS HSM Art. The Art signifies that this lens is part of Sigma's Art range, which they describe as being the range that gives them best performance um, as far as image quality is concerned and is really not for anybody who cares about size or weight of lenses. The DG in the name means that it is a full frame lens and the HSM means it has a hypersonic motor which is basically silent focusing. Um, the lens has 13 elements arranged in 11 groups. It is uh, It has nine blades which are rounded which means that you get excellent bokeh. It is quite a heavy lens, it's 665 grams, that's 23 ounces. Um, it's, it's, it's dimensions are 77 by 94 mils and it takes a 67 millimeter filter. So it's quite a substantial lens. Uh, the focus is internal. It does have quick shift focus um, for Pentax, which I thought was a mistake when I read that because I thought you could only get that on Pentax lenses, but actually it does work. It's a CAF3 lens, so it's not compatible with all Pentax lenses, uh, all Pentax bodies, I should say. Um, so that's something that you need to check um, if you're considering buying this lens. It's not weather sealed. Uh, it has a widest aperture of f1.4 and a narrowest of f16. If you want to check the reviews over on uh, Pentax forums, you'll see that it has an outstanding rating for sharpness, aberrations. Uh, the book, I think, is the highest rating I've seen of any lens on Pentax forums at 9.9. .9. I'm sure somebody's now going to point out a lens that's got a 10. Um, the consensus there seems to be that the problem is with the uh, autofocus and uh, the handling and the value for money. But personally, I think the value for money is excellent, the handling it's okay i don't mind big lens and the autofocus i have not really had any problems but i see a lot of people talk about how poor the autofocus is but personally i found it to be fast and silent as described hi guys welcome back to another lens review being filmed in my kitchen during the coronavirus um, lockdown um this one is a lens with Pentax fit, but it's not a Pentax lens. This one is the Sigma 35 f1.4 art lens. Now, oh, um, this lens, I haven't actually used it much. I decided a little while ago that I was going to start building up a collection of um, prime lenses. Um, I generally had bought um, zoom lenses because of their sort of utilitarian nature and... Um, making sure I could cover all eventualities, but there's nothing quite as sharp as a prime um, and something quite satisfying about using a prime as well. So I decided I wanted a 35. I had the the, the DA35, I've still got it, um, which is on full frame. I've done a review of that, which I'll link somewhere or you can find it on the channel, um, which I wasn't satisfied with on the K1. Of course, it's an APS-C lens originally. Um, Originally, it is a KPSC lens, and uh, I felt it fell down, as you'll know if you watched the previous review. Um, so I started looking for a lens of 35 or thereabouts. I did give very serious consideration to the limited 31, um, but two things put me off: one, the price; two, the image quality. It has the, from what I've seen, I haven't owned one. I've spoken to lots of people who do own them. Looked at lots of reviews. Looked at lots of sample images. It has the limited pixie dust, but as you'll know, my view is that wherever you can, if, you, if you've only got one option, go for something that'll give you clinical sharpness. Once you've got clinical sharpness, you can work your way back to whatever you want to achieve um, as far as the look and the feel of the image is concerned. But if you start off with a lens that's got a very distinctive look, you have to live with that distinctive look. Um, the 31, um, fantastic size, um, and it's definitely something special and don't tell the wife but i will probably buy one at some point but when i've only got one 35 i'm going to be using my full frame i want it to be something that's clinically sharp because that gives me more options when it comes to post-processing and the other reason was 
for the price of the, the FA31, I could have bought this three times over in the sale. Now, I know lots of people have said that they have focusing issues with this lens. I have to say, I haven't experienced any, but I haven't used it a lot. Maybe I'm just lucky, but I haven't used it a lot. I bought this lens primarily for I needed a 35 because I was doing most of my portrait shoots and family sessions in high-end rooms, and the rooms would be very in-depth. So if I was going to do a group shot, or we did a group shot um, at the beginning of the end, just to try and loosen people up, with some of my other lenses, like the 77, um, I didn't feel I could get far enough back. Um, and I was going through a phase of wanting to use primes. Um, I've got the 24 to 70 now, which actually does the job anyway. Um, but I couldn't afford that at the time. So this was a much cheaper option. Uh, so I bought it for that purpose. And then I've now got a studio space of my own and I do not need to use a 35 to get everybody in shot. I could use a 200 if I needed to, um, and I could still just walk far enough back and get everybody in shot. Um, so that's made a big difference to my usage. I feel a bit guilty that I don't use this lens um, because it is really sharp, it's really nice, it's silent focus. If I was shooting weddings, I'd probably use this lens a bit more. Um, but I don't, I don't know what, if you know why my policy on the weddings. I don't advertise them, I do shoot them. Um, I shoot them for people I like, people who are stuck. Um, I'm quite precious about my time. I don't like to book things off too far in advance. So if your photographer lets you down, I might shoot your wedding for you. Um, if something happens and it's an emergency, I might shoot your wedding for you. Um, if you're asking last minute, if you ask me a year ahead, no. I don't know what I'm doing next June. June 2021, 2022, no. And no, no thanks. Um, so I don't promote weddings in any way. I don't even show the photos that I take at weddings. Um, so I don't get that many referrals for weddings in here. But yeah, you could use that. I think it would be a nice lens to use at weddings. Um, for group shots at the outdoors. It does render really nice. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to show you some images now um, of the th I've taken with a 35. I haven't selected them yet. I don't think there'll be that many because I haven't used it much. Um, anyway, if you find the videos that I'm making for about my gear and generally photography useful, then please subscribe. I really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you. And let's look at the images. When it came to selecting some images to show you of the 35, it became quite apparent um, quite quickly that the main use I had for this lens was around the house um, with the kids. It's nice and wide, it's nice and bright, um, fast lens, so it's useful for those sort of things. Um, for reasons that I don't want to go into, um, I'm not going to show you those photos. Um, if you know me, you know why, but anyway. So I've got a limited selection of, of photos to show you um, from this particular lens. And if you'll notice, Lightroom's shown that this is an embedded preview. So this is how the camera had rendered the image. I'll click on these and it'll take you to the unedited raw because um, most of these I haven't processed. So here's a photo from Christmas tree. So you can see you do get very nice round uh, bokeh balls from it. And take off the uh, camera zone processing. The embedded preview is the JPEG that the Pentax K1 in this particular case has made for the image. Um, so take that off and you see the flat raw as well. Yeah, and I must have been continuing to mess around with this lens around about Christmas time. You see where it hits, it's quite um, it's quite a sharp lens. I mean, this is running ISO 2500. I think mean, that's perfectly acceptable for a uh, kick around the house photo. Okay, and just another one. I think I must have just been playing with this around Christmas time. This is a studio shot for a model that I never actually used. This is just the, the raw, um, unprocessed JPEG I always um, shoot for to protect the highlights, so it's a little bit dark. Um, I took it out for a, a street photo walk around. Um, yeah, a bit of an aside, but uh, my view on street photography is I have some really little cameras. I have the Fujifilm XF10, which people traditionally think of as a street camera. And I find when I try to use that for street photography, people are very aware of you. They tend to notice, they're a little bit suspicious. If I take my K1 out with a massive looking lens on it, and when the 35 
is very physically intimidating. It does look like a big lens. People tend to pay no notice to you because they think it's a long zoom and you're shooting past them. Anyway, that's a total aside, but you can see it's, a, it's very sharp. And this is what it f8 so you'd expect it to be pretty sharp really i mean the guy's the subject in this particular photo i'm not a great street photographer um so i click embed pre removing bed preview it'll show you it in color um so you get the idea of the color rendering on a flat raw and um, when i shoot street i tend to put the camera into black and white profile it just helps me see the light and the shade a bit better when i'm uh, looking at the back of the camera and review the images to say which ones are worth processing but again, if I hit embed preview, you can see the colours. So yeah, I don't remember any particular issues with this camera for um, 125 was probably a bit slow for that. But um, I don't remember any particular issues with this camera as far as the autofocus is concerned. Um, and in my collection were some photos that you would expect to typically have autofocus issues. Yeah, I am um, photo shoots I should say where I'm chasing little kids around the studio that sort of thing oh, people traditionally say that um, sigma lenses tend to render things a bit flat and um, with not a lot of saturation I don't find that at all with this lens yeah I find the colors to be from this lens to be quite rich personally Here yeah, was obviously just messing around with shooting at the sun, see what sort of flare we would get. Nothing particular. Zoom in is a much chromatic aberration. Mm, that's 100%. I tend not to want to zoom any further than that. Um, I think when you start going beyond that, you're just looking for problems. They're not necessarily there. Yeah, I must have been trying to see what sort of uh, sunburst I could create with that. It's uh, very Teletubbies for anybody who's got children of a certain age. We'd see the sun sort of thing. It's quite nice, I think, actually. I think I must have been shooting at F8 pretty much the whole day um, when I was doing this. This is all from one sort of walk around Durham City. Here, I probably have pre-focused. Um, I think I was trying to use this frame as a frame for the subject as they walk through trying to catch as much of the shadow from the railings and their face as possible so i imagine she is slightly out of focus yeah shooting a one two uh one four hundred to the second it's probably a bit too close as well this is durham city by the way in the northeast of england if you were wondering I wonder if we've got any chromatic aberration up here on the uh, cathedral tower. Yeah, it's ISO 640, so it's a little bit noisy. But I don't see anything major. I don't recall ever seeing anything major when processing with it either. Anyway, hope you find those images to have been useful in evaluating what comes out of the lens. Um, maybe more so because they're unprocessed. Maybe less so. I don't know.